All right, here's my uh, part two video for April 20th on the rest of the colligative properties. So it doesn't have the long derivations uh, that the one for boiling point did, but basically that's how these equations were developed using very similar derivations. So as I wrote here, the colligative property that um, is most observed by just the people we know who aren't chemists is freezing point depression. And that's because in northern cities, road salt effectively melts the ice and snow that accumulates in the winter. So if you did the thermodynamic analysis, the derivation would be very, very similar to the one we just completed. Um, if the solid that forms is pure solvent, um, then the chemical potential solid line won't change in the figure. So I just kind of cribbed a little bit of the figure of chemical potential that was in your textbook. I think it's yeah, figure 6.16. Um, if the solid line is this uh, red line I've indicated there, um, it's n you're not really freezing solution out at the beginning of the freezing um, process, um, only at the very end when the whole liquid has changed. But the point is, is that that line doesn't change. What does change is the chemical potential of the solution, which is indicated by the dashed line. Notice how the dashed line is going to cross that solid line at a place left of where it crossed originally. The original place where the solid and the liquid line cross, and you've seen this before, is where the phase change happens, the freezing point. Now that the solution chemical potential has been decreased, you're seeing the new freezing point or the new intersection of the line to the left of where you started. Um, the Gen Chem equation shows that the degree of the freezing point change is going to be proportional to how much of the solute has been dissolved. So the molality of the solute is M2. Kf is a constant that has a lot of the parameters of the solvent in it. So notice it's got something like the molar mass of the solvent, it's got the freezing point of the pure solvent, and it's got the delta H of fusion, I should say, the molar delta H of fusion for the solvent. Um, I read in Chang's book, it's an interesting piece of trivia, that the derivation of the boiling point equations assumed that the solute was non-volatile. However, this restriction does not apply in freezing point depression. So just kind of a, and they give an example of the antifreeze that you might put in your car. And this is something I'd like you to read on your own, and I think I might look for, I think there might be a JCAM Ed article on this, I said, your text discusses an interesting story about polar ocean fish. Um, please read that section. I think I'm going to try to find a link for you to uh, read a little bit more on that. Um, here's an example from your text where they dissolve sugar, sucrose, in the form of sucrose, table sugar, 45.2 grams of sugar in 316 grams of water. Calculate the new boiling point and the new freezing point. Well, you need some constants to do this, and the constants I got right out of the table. The boiling point constant for water is 0.51 uh, Kelvin per molal, and the freezing, uh, freezing point constant is 1.86. First, calculate the molality of the solute. And so I did that right here. I got a value of 0.418 molal. I plugged that into the delta T equation, and I got a value of 0.21 Kelvin. 0.2, not very big change. Remember that you're solving for boiling point elevation, so you're going to add that value to the normal boiling point, and I get a new boiling point of 373.36. For the change in the freezing point, notice that the equation calculates a positive value. In this case, it's 0.78 degrees Kelvin. Don't forget you need to subtract that from the normal freezing point to get the new freezing point. Another thing you'll notice, if you looked at the table, you'll see that the Kfs for the um, solvents is always larger than the Kb values. And this has to do with the delta H term that's in the derivation. Um, delta H of vaporization values tend to be larger than delta H of fusion values. And so that larger term in the denominator for Kb is going to lower the boiling point constant. Uh, so then I have the final colligative property is osmotic pressure. Um, the setup here is not the most common way you see this, usually in, you're, you're talking about cell membranes, but um, in this case, with just to illustrate the concept, we've got a semi-permeable membrane between some pure solvent and the solution. 
Now, if the permeable membrane is designed to allow solvent molecules to pass through but not solute molecules, you're going to see the water level rise on the right-hand side tube. A so-called osmotic pressure will build up. So in the picture, the value of the letter H, the difference in the heights, uh, is, the, is proportional to the pressure. So you need to know the density of water and that sort of thing to actually calculate the pressure. We're not going to get hung up on that. But in terms of the thermodynamics, what's going on here? Well, what happens spontaneously in chemistry? The drive toward lower Gibbs energy. So we see the chemical potential on the left-hand side of the pure solvent is represented there. That's when the mole fraction is 1, obviously. On the right-hand side, the chemical potential of the solution is going to have a value less than the pure solvent. So therefore, that unevenness is going to force the drive for a net flow of solution from the left to the right. It's going to be a drive toward equilibrium. Basically, there's a natural tendency to want to have the chemical potentials equal. Equilibrium is reached when the flow of solvent is exactly balanced by the pressure difference. So the extra pressure on the right-hand side increases the chemical potential of the solvent. That's something you've seen before. Um, and so uh, increases the chemical potential of the solvent in the solution. So that mu1r term is going to be increased because of the increased pressure. So this extra pressure, so-called osmotic pressure, is represented by the Greek letter pi in a couple of different ways. The Gen Chem way is to do it in terms of um, molarity times the gas constant times temperature. Um, other ways you could see it is concentration of the solute in units of grams per liter. So keep an eye on units. Um, and then R times T divided by the molar mass. All right. So depending on the units you choose for um, the R, if you do the normal gas constant, your pressure is going to come out in atmospheres. If you need to convert to Tor for a problem, you'll, you should be able to do that. And my last uh, little bit here is the last part of the um, osmotic pressure, and that is um, we need to realize that everything we had done was assuming ideal behavior for the solutes. Obviously, not every solution is ideal. For non-ideal solutions, the osmotic pressure at any concentration follows a power series. So the expression for the power series is right here. You've seen power series before. Usually with normal situations, um, only the first virial term is uh, necessary. So the letter B is much bigger than C, which is much bigger than D. Usually you can get pretty good results by just using the B value. So um, this equation is related to one of the homework problems, and um, you can get, I think, a molar mass using some data for a non-ideal solution. Um, molar mass ends up being one of the uh, tools, or at least say osmotic pressure is the tool, to determine the molar mass for proteins, really large molecules. It can be difficult to use the other colligative properties for really large molecules, and some of the homework problems uh, will illustrate that. So I'm going to ask you to read the text, the last part, talking about um, cells and such on your own. Take some notes. I'll build some narrative questions for you uh, for your third exam. And uh, till then, if you have some time, try before Monday these colligative property questions that I have listed uh, at the bottom of the page. Uh, be ready to ask questions if you trip up on any of those. Um, I'm going to work on your papers for Cheminar first before I put together an answer key. So why don't you get us started on that? and um, we'll, we'll go forward. So I um, hope you're having a good weekend, and I'll definitely see you on Monday.